All right, good to have you back here. Uh, we're going to keep talking about money here. The housing uh, crisis we just talked about, right? But now Nick Hop would join me, certified financial planner, founder, president of Peak Wealth. You can find out peakwm.com, peakwm.com. Nick, good to have you back. Thank you, Steve. Good to be here. Always a pleasure. Let's see our friends in Washington, New York, California, all looking to add a new payroll tax to pay for long-term care. Uh, long-term care for everybody, I guess. Look, uh, more taxes, more handouts, more problems, more you know, weight on the back of businesses and people that actually get up and go to work every day. What do you make of this? Well, I'm in Michigan, and this hasn't come across our desk yet, but clients in California brought this yeah. to my attention. My clients are saying, which long-term care policy should I choose? And I thought, well, I don't think you need long-term care insurance because you know, you're pretty well set. Well, it turns out if they don't have their own policy, the state would impl- implement a payroll tax, and it could be between 1% and 3% of your pay, just one more tax in California. So, so wait a second. They have long-term care insurance, and you have to buy it. And if you don't buy it, they will charge you. The state will charge you. That's what you're telling me. So you have to have a, a, an account that, that meets certain standards. And if it doesn't meet those standards, the state of California will charge you directly. Is that what you're telling me? Exactly right. Unbelievable. So, yeah, how long till they bring it to Michigan and every other blue state? Well, it's, it's, it's an... You know, it's an eye opener. And let me tell you, from sitting on my side of the desk, long term care insurance is a very difficult sell. You know, we don't sell very much of it because no one wants to buy it because it's so expensive. So there's really a problem, you know, across the whole country with with nursing homes, the price of care. Medicaid is obviously a problem uh, and that's the last resort. And so obviously we can see in California uh, Medicaid is operating at a deficit, and so they're trying to figure out a way to, to fill that gap. Yeah, meanwhile, in California, uh, Farm Bureau, the latest insurance company, just say we're not going to write anything here for, for house insurance and so forth. So insurance companies are fleeing California. Uh, I don't know if this helps. Uh, you've got a bit of advice here as we're not too far away from April the 15th. Uh, you say do not, do not ignore the 1099 your broker sent you. Uh, check online if you haven't received one yet from your online bank accounts or else the IRS will send you uh, an audit in a couple of years. What, what does this mean? Well, <clears throat> right now for my business, we, we used to be affiliated with TD Ameritrade and Schwab has purchased Ameritrade. And so this year is really a special year because people are going to be getting 1099s from TD Ameritrade and Schwab for the same account in the same year. So it's going to be confusing. But when you get those envelopes in the mail that that say important tax documents, please do not ignore them. If you go online, you can also download the PDF and send them to your CPA. And also those online bank accounts, they don't typically send uh, 1099s in the mail. So you have to be proactive and go after them. And if you don't disclose them to the IRS, well, the, the brokerage firm or the bank, they are sending them to the IRS. And the IRS is smart enough to see when the numbers are not matching up. And they will mail out at you, and you will owe tax and penalties and interest. Uh, and, and that's on the little bit of interest you get on a bank account? Yes, that's right. And oftentimes, so, these online so, savings, oftentimes the online savings accounts are not mailing them at all, and you don't think to go get it. So this is, your, this is my announcement to you uh, to go after it and, and get that data. Right. So... Uh, the money market I have, for example, uh, I need to pay taxes on whatever my upside has been on that for the last, for the, well, for the year, last year. That's right. All right. Well, that's nice. More, look, you're full of good news today, all right? Taxes, taxes, and more taxes. We should have created our own social media company and sold it for $3.5 billion in our favor. Anyhow, Nick, uh, let's see. Bitcoin, I see, is on the rise again after collapsing for a while. Uh, $70,000. Wish I'd bought that for a buck. Uh, what's going on here? Well, we, we talked the last few weeks about you know the AI stocks like NVIDIA, and the Bitcoin chart is identical, right? It's, it's gone parabolic, but we do have what some chartists could suggest as a double top from a couple of years back. Uh, but I think what, what we what we see with retail investors is people are chasing, and you know you probably want to wait for a pullback on something like this. Don't chase. 
you could end up, you know, like buying Cisco in March of 2000, and and it could take a while for that value to come back. Even if Bitcoin right. is here to stay, which which I think it is, you know, just be careful with your purchase price. Yeah, be well. It's the same with anything. You make money the day you buy it, not the day you sell it. That's true of real estate. It's probably true of of what happens in this space. Uh, and real quickly, we've got about a minute left here. A donor advised fund. Uh, what is a donor advised fund? Uh, back to Schwab again. You see, the leader in this space. Uh, that you can donate. Uh, what does this mean? Right. So imagine uh, you, you're charitably inclined and you want to donate to your church or another cause that you are, are interested in. You can donate highly appreciated stock or cash directly to the charity, or you can create your donor advised fund, donate the stock or the cash to, to this account that you set up at Schwab, and you can keep the money invested. It can grow. And you do pay, you do pay out from that account to your church or your charity. And it's really interesting because we can pull forward future donations. And a lot of people are not donating enough to hit to be able to itemize their deductions. So they're just filing for the standard deduction and the charitable contribution is not helping them. The donor advised right. fund is the solution for this. So, all right, so uh, church charity, uh, can you donate to any nonprofit? Yeah. Any, any uh, nonprofit that's qualified, absolutely right. You can also take your you required go. minimum distribution from your IRA, donate that directly okay. to the charity charitable as well. All right. And I want you to find out more with Nick. Go to peakwm.com, peakwm.com. There's a QR code for those of you watching on, on any of the video feeds today. The QR code right there. Click right on that. You can get advice on on your finances, on your future, on all of the things we talked about today and far more from Nick Hopwood. Nick, I always appreciate you being here from Peak Wealth Management. Nick, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Greatly appreciate it. There you have it, Nick Hopwood, everybody. And, uh, you know, I don't know. The economy is so tough on so many people right now, and yet some seem to be doing well. Where are you these days? I'll be right back. <laughs> 